Hi there, it's Kristen from k -Becca, and I want to give a big thank you to Nancy for her comment on another one of my videos, which inspired me to make this one. Today I'll be comparing the Silhouette Stamp Material with the Silhouette Mint, and I'll hopefully be able to give you a better idea about what you can do with each, and which is the best choice for the types of stamps that you want to make. First, I'll go over the supplies that you'll need to make each type of stamp. To make stamps with the Silhouette Mint, you'll need the Mint Stamping Machine. It has a pretty small footprint and won't take up a lot of space, which is definitely a plus. You'll also need stamp sheets and blocks to make your stamps and ink that's specifically formulated to work with the mint so you can ink your stamps. However, the mint can work with other inks and you can see some of the results that I've had in the video link that should be popping up right about now. As of the time that I recorded this video, you can purchase a Silhouette Mint Starter Kit on Amazon.com for about $73. The starter kit includes the stamp machine and black, red, blue, and yellow inks, plus two different size stamp sheets, stamp mounts, and stamp blocks, and all of the wires and plugs that you'll need for the machine. It also includes a disc with Mint Design Studio, which you'll need to install to design and make stamps with the Mint. I'd actually recommend going straight to the Silhouette America site to download the latest version since the version that's on the disc might not be, or at least it wasn't for me. It's a free download, and I was able to install it on my computer in about 15 minutes, which includes the time it took to install the version that came on the disk, then download and upgrade to the latest version from the Silhouette website. In addition to the four colors of ink that come with the Mint Starter Kit, there are at least 10 or 11 additional ink colors that you can purchase separately. And at the time of this video, they were $3.99 each from both Amazon.com and the Silhouette America website. You can also purchase additional stamp kits and stamp sheets, which come in a variety of sizes and range in price from $4.99 for the smallest size to $16.99 for the largest. The difference between a stamp kit and a set of stamp sheets is that the kit includes a wood stamp base in addition to stamp sheets, stamp mounts, and sticker labels for the stamps. The set of stamp sheets doesn't include a stamp base, so you'll want to purchase the sheet sets when you already have the stamp base for the stamp in the size that you'll need. So at the time that this video was made, the starter cost for the Silhouette Mint is $73, plus additional costs for additional ink colors and or additional stamp kits and stamp sheets. To make stamps with the Silhouette stamp material, you don't need to purchase a special machine if you already have the Silhouette Cameo or Silhouette Portrait. I'm assuming that you can cut the material with a Silhouette Curio too, though I haven't confirmed that. You can purchase a stamping starter kit for about $30, and this includes three sheets of the stamping material, the special mat that you need to cut the stamping material, plus acrylic stamp blocks, an ink pad, 10 exclusive stamp designs, and an instructional DVD. But if you already do stamping, you probably have stamp blocks and inks that you can use. So it's up to you whether it's worth it to purchase the full kit. I just purchased a package of three sheets of the stamp material, plus the special mat that's needed to cut the material. You can purchase both for under $10 total on Amazon.com and for about $12 total from the Silhouette America website. Now I want to show you what you'll need to do to make a stamp with the Silhouette stamp material. We are in Silhouette Design Studio, which is the same software that you use for regular die cutting with the Silhouette machines, so no special software is needed, unlike with the Mint. I do have to change the mat and paper size settings by opening up the Design Page Settings window from the top right menu and changing the mat type from Cameo, which is the machine that I'm using, to Stamp for the stamping mat. After that, I need to go up to the page size area and choose stamp from the drop down box to change it to the correct size for the stamp material. I want to do an apples to apples comparison with the mint for the first example, so I'll open up the clip art that I used earlier to make a stamp with the mint, and I'll resize that down to 1.7 inches wide, which is similar to the size that I made the stamp with the mint. I can't cut it in its current form, so I'll need to open the trace window from the top right menu and trace the shape by selecting the trace area and clicking trace. You'll see a red outline appear after the image is traced, and that's the shape that we'll cut. We don't need the original image anymore, so we can go ahead and delete that. For the next example, I'll use a shape that has been designed as a die cut. It has thicker lines than the first example, and I've also made a stamp with the mint using the original clip art version, which has thinner lines. 
I'm going to resize this image to 1.25 inches, which is a similar size to the stamp that I made with the mint. For the final example, I'm just going to make a simple circle to see how that cuts from the stamp material. I'll resize it to half an inch since it's a simple shape. Now I'm ready to cut my example shapes, and I'll open the Cut Settings window from the top right menu and choose Stamp Material from the Material Type area. I'll change my blade to 9 and cut the shapes, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, I've cut the stamps from the stamp material. I wanted to show you a close up of what the material looks like. It's pretty thin and very flexible. Oh, and I also wanna mention that at least if you have a silhouette cameo, you will need to change the spacer bars on the machine before you can properly load the stamp mat because it's a smaller size. I'd never had to do that before, but on the inside lid of the cameo, the first version at least, which is what I have, there are instructions for doing this. All right, so first I'll pop out the circle, which cut fine, no problem. Next, I'll remove the high stamp from the sheet. It also cut cleanly, but I wanna be careful as I'm weeding out the inner areas since I don't wanna tear the stamp. The material is very flexible though, so there weren't any problems. I'm not going to use the dot on the eye and high just because I think that it will be too fussy to deal with, and it's really not necessary in this case. Finally, I'll attempt to remove the Baked With Love stamp from the sheet but you can see that while it did cut, the lines on the shape are so thin that they sometimes didn't cut cleanly and in some places the stamp material actually split and broke. So you can see that the lines on this stamp were too thin for the stamp material. However, if you wanna thicken the lines to make them a similar weight to the lines on the high stamp, you can use the offset function in Silhouette Studio to do so. But in its original form, it just isn't a good fit with the stamp material. Next, I'm going to test some inks with the high stamp. First, I'll use Versafine, which is one of my favorite inks for regular stamping. You can see that it immediately beads up on the stamp and the stamped impression is pretty beady too. After that, I tried Ranger Archival ink with very similar results. Then I tried Stazon ink, a solvent ink, and while that result was better, it still wasn't great. I cleaned the Stazon ink off with some cleaner, and then I tried Memento Lux ink, which didn't give a good result at all. So dye and solvent-based inks aren't a good match for this material. I did watch a couple of other videos, and they suggested either lightly sanding or using an eraser over the surface of the stamp material before cutting it to make the surface less slick. I didn't try either of these things, but they might be something that you wanna try. Next, I tried some Versamagic chalk ink, which is a pigment ink, and I got much better results with that. Pigment inks tend to be thicker, and my guess is that this is why this type of ink doesn't beat up on the surface of the stamp material. I stamped a second time with this ink, and my result was even better. Then, I tried the Golden Glitz Metallic ink, which is another pigment ink. The results weren't bad, but they were fairly light. After that, I tried an Altenu Crisp ink, which is a dye ink, and the results were similar to the dye inks that I tried earlier. At this point, I was just digging around in my ink drawer and trying out the different brands of ink that I have, and you can see that I started to make a mess at the bottom of the paper where I was cleaning off the stamp between inks. In hindsight, I should have used a piece of scrap paper for that, so sorry about the mess. Next, I tried one of the Avery L pigment inks, and this was my best result to this point. You have to make sure to really load the stamp with ink for a clean impression. Okay, up next, I tried one of the Cat's Eye Style pigment ink pads from Colorbox. It was a bit tough to get the kind of ink coverage that I wanted since the stamp pad is so small, but I think that if I had been able to really load it up, the results would have been great. So be sure to keep the size of your ink pad versus your stamp in mind when you use these stamps too. I went back to the Versamagic Chalk Pigment ink for my next try, and again, I got great results. And I forgot to include this ink in the initial testing, but I also tried the Versamark Watermark ink, which is a very sticky and thick ink, and got great results with that too. So the verdict is that pigment and other thick and sticky inks in general are a thumbs up for the stamp material and dye and solvent based inks are not. I really appreciate you sticking around to watch all of my somewhat random ink testing with the stamp material and I'll make note of all of the inks that I tried and links to brands that worked in the description area below the video or in the post if you're watching this on kbecca.com. 
For the Silhouette Mint stamps, I'm not going to show you the step-by-step -step design process in this video because I do have another video where I show you that. I'll have a link to that video in the description area below. The process for designing a stamp with the mint is similar to how you design a stamp for the stamp material. But for mint stamps, you'll need to use Mint Studio, the proprietary software for the mint. As I mentioned earlier, this is a free download from the Silhouette website and it's pretty easy to install. After you design your stamp in Mint Studio, you'll send it to the Mint and insert the correct size stamp sheet into the Mint machine. The stamp will be created through a thermal printing process and the design will be slightly raised from the surface of the stamp sheet. After the stamp has printed and is mounted on a stamp block, you attach it to a wood stamp base and ink it up with ink that's specially formulated for Mint stamps. There are other ink options, and I'll have a link to a video in the description area below where I test different brands of inks with mint stamps. When using Silhouette Mint ink, you have to let it sit for five to 10 minutes on the stamp to absorb, and it does absorb up into the stamp a little bit like a sponge. For the first few stamped impressions, the stamp is very inky, but the image becomes more crisp and clear after about eight or so impressions. I always stamp out the first impressions onto a piece of scrap paper, and then I move to cardstock or whatever paper I want the final stamp to be on. The stamp that I'm using here is the same design as the high stamp that we used with the Silhouette stamp material earlier, but you can see that the lines are much finer on this stamp, and the mint had no issues printing these lines. One of the biggest differences between the Silhouette mint and the Silhouette stamp material is the type of image that will work. With the stamp material, you're limited to somewhat simpler images and images with thicker lines, while with the mint, you can easily create stamps with fine, detailed line work and elements that are detached from each other. You can also design personalized and photo stamps with the mint. And while you can cut letters and names with the stamp material, you don't have the flexibility with size and line weight that you do with the mint. You can see an example of a personalized stamp that I made here. I was very conservative with the font that I used for the personalized area, but I could have gone a lot smaller without a problem. You just can't cut that type of graphic cleanly with the stamp material. In the end, you have to invest more upfront in the Silhouette Mint and related supplies than you do with the stamp material in that, but you're getting a lot more flexibility and many more options with the Mint. If you wanna make personalized stamps, photo stamps, address stamps, or stamps with fine lines and details, then the mint is the way to go. However, if you'd like to create simpler stamps with solid shapes and thicker lines, or if you want to personalize something and just need one stamp or a stamp here and there, and you use a bolder font, then you can certainly get by with the stamp material. I hope that you found this comparison and the examples to be helpful, and that you have a better understanding of what you can do with the Silhouette Mint versus the Silhouette Stamp material. You can find a full list of supplies used in this video in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll tune in again soon.